functions of nouns. This is part two. In part one, I listed six functions of nouns and promised that in subsequent videos, I'm going to explain each of the functions. In this video, we want to look at nouns as subjects of sentences. Now, the subject of a sentence refers to the person, the place, or the thing that performs the action of the verb in the sentence or that the sentence refers to, okay? This implies that any word or group of words that occupy the position of a subject in a sentence, that word or group of words is automatically a noun. Now, we are going to identify the subject in each of the following sentences. Sentence 1 says, music edifies the mind. Now, to identify the subject of a sentence, the first thing to do is to identify the verb in the sentence. And once you are able to identify the verb, then you ask this question, who verb or what verb? For instance, in this sentence one, the verb is edifies. So we ask the question, what edifies? And the answer is music. Music is the subject of this sentence. And as such, music is a noun. Sentence two, intelligence is a virtue. This verb here is is. So we ask, what is a virtue? And it is intelligence. So intelligence is the subject of this sentence. Intelligence, therefore, is a noun. Next, table of knowledge TV teaches English. The verb here is teaches. And we ask the question, what teaches English? It is table of knowledge TV. So table of knowledge TV is the subject of this sentence. And as such, is a noun. Maru and Ifemena love apples. Who love apples? It is Maru and Ifemena. So Maru and Ifemena are the subjects of this sentence. They are nouns. Now, note that the subjects always come before the verb. In each of these examples, we have a single word or a single name as the subject. We could also have a group of words such as phrases and clauses as the subject of sentences, in which case they are nouns. So let's look at this. The tall man touches the ceiling without a ladder. Here the verb of interest is touches and we ask the question, what touches the ceiling? It is the tall man. So the tall man is the subject of this sentence. But the tall man is a phrase. And at the same time, it occupies the position of a subject, and so it is a noun. The expression, the tall man, therefore, is a noun phrase. Let's look at example two. Every single memory of the occasion gives me joy. The verb here is gives, and we ask, what gives me joy? The answer is every single memory of the occasion. So, every single memory of the occasion is the subject of this sentence. It is a phrase, and since it occupies the position of a subject, it is a noun. So this expression is a noun phrase. Now let's look at where clauses serve as subject of sentences and are therefore nouns. Example 1. Every word she pronounced was correct. Our verb of interest here is words, and so we ask the question, what was correct? The answer is every word she pronounced. Every word she pronounced is the subject of this sentence. It is a clause, and since it occupies the position of a subject, it is also a noun. And so this expression is a noun clause. How do we know it is a clause? Because it has a subject and a verb. Okay, let's look at example two. That she could read at four amazes everyone. The verb of interest here is amazes. So let us ask, what amazes everyone? That she could read at four. So that she could read at four is the subject of this sentence and therefore a noun. But at the same time, it is a clause. So the expression that she could read at four is a noun clause. Do you understand? All right, here is a simple exercise. You are to identify the subject of each of these sentences and indicate if it is just a noun, a noun phrase, or a noun clause. Let's read the sentences. One, 
whoever finds the crown gets a reward. 2. Elders need proper medical care. 3. A bunch of dry woods lay on the ground. Kindly put your answer in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching.